with how long I have to live. Go back 60 years, and it wasn't the enemy that had the pilot scared. It was the chopper itself. Rotary flight was a risky business, as pilots struggled to control the whirring blades above their heads. Early rotary wing flight and pioneering was extremely dangerous. You were essentially sitting underneath a large food processor, and the rotor systems were extremely unreliable at the time, too, so you were really hanging it out uh, when you were experimenting with rotary wing aviation. 50 years later, helicopters had advanced. They were more reliable, but survivability was still an issue. In the Korean War, sea pilots relied on their harness, their helmet, and a whole lot of luck. More thought went into the utilization of a helicopter in a battlefield than did thoughts of how to make the aircraft least susceptible to ground fire and crash worthy. So to be a pilot in an H-13 in Korea uh, in anywhere around the front line was an extremely dangerous job. The Sioux's huge glass canopy earned it the nickname Fishbowl. It gave the pilot great visibility, but absolutely no protection from incoming fire. The H-13 Su saved thousands of lives in Korea, but the crews were paying the price for their bravery. Fast forward to Vietnam, and some improvements had been made. In the Huey, vulnerable parts of the aircraft, including the cockpit, were now protected with ballistic plates. Sometimes it worked. I saw a medevac helicopter one time that had been hit with a mortar round. It had hundreds and hundreds of holes in it. It looked like Swiss cheese, and they were able to fly that thing off this Special Forces camp. But the improvements to pilot safety didn't extend to the passengers sitting in the back. Crew chiefs had chicken boards, chest protectors uh, was a technical name. And this is an armored plate, and these would actually stop a 30 cal round. The crew members would sit on these things to protect their bottoms. Normally, we would take the back out and sit on the back. Under where I'm sitting is nothing but some light tin. So consequently, sitting on that chicken board gave you uh, much more protection than having it behind your back. There were instances of our people getting shot through the bottom of the aircraft into the chest protectors, and the impact would literally throw them up against the, the ceiling. But all they got out of it was a bruised butt and uh, walk away, live to fight another day. In Vietnam, 2,591 Hueys were lost, with 4,906 pilots and crew members. The problem was that they were coming under constant, intense fire. Day in, day out, Hueys were landing men in hot LZs, and they couldn't dodge the bullets. The Cobra attack helicopter didn't expose itself to the same level of heat. It didn't have to land in combat zones. And its narrow fuselage made it a smaller target for incoming fire. But it did have an Achilles heel. The front seat of the Cobra was always one of the most dangerous places to be because there was absolutely no attenuation in the seat. Uh, I've got a small spinal compression to attest to that. And also the uh, telescopic sight unit which extended into the cockpit became a liability in a crash sequence because the pilot's face or head may be struck against the sight unit and the blade as it flexed down uh, could possibly come into the, the canopy and, and hit the pilot. Not all American helicopters were as vulnerable. The OH-6 Cayuse was one tough bird. Nicknamed the Flying Egg, it hit Vietnam in 1968 and was used for command and control, observation, target acquisition, and reconnaissance. Like a featherweight boxer, it was fast and nimble enough to get out of trouble. Its four-blade rotor reduced noise and made it stealthy. And even though it had a glass chin, the Flying Egg rarely cracked. Well, they called it the flying egg. Obviously, uh, you can see the similarities to an egg here, and one would think that uh, an egg is somewhat vulnerable. However, in the crash sequence, the landing gear would shear off and the, the rotor system would shear off, as well as the tail boom there, and the uh, fuselage with its occupants would come rolling to a stop like an egg, and people uh, would come running to the crash site thinking the worst and open the door and the crew would crawl out unscathed. In Vietnam, these men were the lucky ones. They survived even though their choppers were lost. Each crashed chopper clocked up half a million dollars on the register. 
the cost of life, compounded by the cost of the choppers, persuaded the Army that the next generation of airframes would factor survivability as a primary feature. Fast forward to 1979, and this vision was realized. The result? The UH-60 Blackhawk. The replacement for the long-serving UH-1 Huey utility chopper, it broke new ground in crash worthiness. One of the strengths of the Blackhawk and one of the things that makes it so survivable is its ability to, to save the occupants and the pilots in a crash sequence. If you look at this, this is our main landing gear strut. And what we have here is we have two struts. We have an upper and a lower. And so this strut together in a crash sequence can handle a G-force up to about 11.25 Gs. That's falling out of the sky at about 2,500 feet per minute or about 40 feet per second. At the same time, while that crash sequence is happening, our seat will actually stroke down with the crash G-force so that we don't compress our spinal cord. And this is an open section right here where that, that strut or that seat will collapse right, in, right down to the floor of the aircraft. And another groundbreaking step the Black Hawk's critical components are either armored or redundant. Another great technology on the fuel tanks of a Black Hawk that make it what we call crash worthy is its tank design. And if you can picture, the tank starts right about here and it, it runs about right down here about uh, four feet. It has composites and materials in it, so if a projectile hits the tank, it'll actually close much like a blood clot. I'm very, very confident, and I, and I really know firsthand. I've had a few missions where I've taken rounds, uh, lost systems, but uh, was able to fly the aircraft back safely. The Blackhawk set a new standard for chopper safety, and when the Apache attack helicopter hit the skies, it followed suit. It was withstand 12.7. We had 23 millimeter shots. We've had cases in Afghanistan where an Apache took a round through the transmission and continued to fly for more than 20 minutes, totally dry. The Apache's got two engines. It's capable of flying on one engine, and the engines are separated to the point that if one engine gets hit, the chances of the other engine being damaged is, is greatly reduced. It's got two separate hydraulic systems. It'll operate separately on each hydraulic system with the flight controls. They, too, are separated, so if it takes a hit, it's able to get you home safely. All the major components on the Apache are doubled up. Even pilot and co-pilot have completely separate controls. The Apache is effectively two helicopters in one. If one system takes a hit, the other will keep on going. But the helicopter is only as good as its crew, so they too are protected, encased in heavy armor which deflects hits from any angle. I'm sitting in an armored seat right now. There's armored paneling going down along the sides of the aircraft. When we get in, we can further enhance our, our armor protection by, by sliding this out a little bit, just giving the pilot a little bit more protection. And then we have some ballistic proof window behind me. It's about 23 millimeter proof, which will protect the pilot in the back as well. As helicopters toughened up, so did the weaponry designed to bring them down. The solution? They now deploy sophisticated countermeasures. In the Black Hawk, uh, there's, there's some design features that can help defeat or at least reduce our signature to an IR missile. An IR missile basically, it looks for uh, infrared energy and it hones in on that energy. So one of the things you, you see that's unique is the paint. The paint is non-reflective, so it doesn't put off a lot of IR signature. The windscreens are not flat surface, they're curved, so you don't get uh, sunlight reflecting. And then we have some uh, aftermarket things that we can put on here also. Flares, various flares and jammers that also reduce our signature. 100 years of tireless innovation has transformed the helicopter into a reliable, adaptable, deadly airframe. But its greatest achievement remains its ability to take off and land anywhere, anytime, without a runway. Helicopters.